Little Flavio, a cult of tremendous renown today, but it is more infamy than it the usual war for musicians. Born to a family of two, the young cult grew up as a fowl surprisingly loved and cherished by his young by his brother and sister, mother and father. Within a confined of the city of Fraun, situated in Prance. The father, the head of the mining operations, brought in much needed coin for the family that allowed them to live just right. They had enough for food, clothings, but they still had to save for the special occasions where gifts were given out. The cramp streets of Franz were just another bout of the lack of technology and general knowledge of hygiene, so maladies were always rampant. Not one day would go by that a carter wearing a beaked mask would walk through the streets, empty hoofed, something that any pony would find discomfort in. Flavio did not care for these things, however, in France, specifically on the high plateau that Franz stood proudly on, rain was prominent. Featured of the day, and Flavio hated that. He hated rain. He, in fact, he absolutely despised anything that reminded him of such things. As a drip faucet, pump, or even tears, so much so that even when he was hurt, be it physically or emotionally, he wouldn't cry. Well, that's not true. He would make the sounds, and his face would swell up like a tomato. But he would, but no tears or snivels would leak from his face. As time passed, however, the young stallions, his coat having turned a pale blue with resplendent silver mane and tail, pondering about his future at, si at sixteen, he still hadn't found his one true talent, and his parents worried for him. In a day and age where one's talents decided their future, Suspense of a cutie mark appearance was troublesome. The first brother had inherited his brother his father's positions after harsh study and training, and the sister became a seamstress for the local nobility. Something she seems quite good at, although even her talents could not protect her from the Capricorn personality of the spoiled all the time. The young stallion looked through his room window, his head resting on his forelegs, sighing the trickles of the water droplets on his dirty window were the one things that made any semblance of noise irritated, annoyed, and troubled. The sounds of water hitting glass started filling Flavio's ears, and just before he lost it, he started to notice something. His ears perked up, and he looked around the wooden room. The large bed covered with a crimson blanket and head with two white pillows made no noise. The hoof carved drawers, their surface something like a ponin, sculpture were not creaking as the furniture had a tendency to do. His vanity mirrors rested calmly upon its legs. The various beauticorous products of equally varying size and colors did not move by the same manner of ghostly hooves. No, it was the rain. The saying he detested the most, the saying that bothered him throughout his foulhood. Suddenly, a stroke of inspiration. 
if only to get rid of the annoying noise in his head. Downstairs, next to the entrance, laid a harp chorus, a modest little sang. Made for, from polished red wood and two rows of keys, of painted keys, having come from a grateful dignitary when Flavio's sister was commissioned by the f local governor to make him a beautiful scarf. The instrument remained in the house for the young stallion's mother to play on her free time. He pulled the small stool up, and as with hearts pounding and breath irregular, put his hooves on the instrument. Noise. That's all that came out, but he would not relent. The sounds needed to leave his ears. That accursed tapping of the rain against the glass weeks passed, and he trained himself to associate wit each key with a sound, and each sound became associated with a key and hoof position. Eventually, he became confident enough to play the instrument in front of his family. During a celebration in, to honor spirits, it is said that upon sing, a single stroke of the ivory, that his cutie mark appeared by the thanks of spirits, ironically, the cutie mark was the top half of a black eyeless mask through which tears flown. His family was pleased, congratulated him, but he was not happy. To Flavio, it was a shame that he would never get rid. So he simply hid it. His talent were used at a local theater when personally from the governor when he then the nobles and soon became fame across the country. Years went by that he entertained so many ponies and he loved this. Finally, after so long he could give back to society what it gave him, joy, nature, However, well, let's just say he was an adamant supporter of industrialism at the expense of the forest and river banks. This caused him some ear, but being a musician, he only had affairs with a brute or two of the linguistic vari variety. After years of touring, the old stallion at the ripe old age of 66 was invited by the dying noble of his home of Thrawn. It had been a st so long the stallion fought, so long since he had seen his old home. What of the people, the new de generation? What of the buildings? What, of the what had changed? What about his mother and father? Surprisingly, they were still alive and well on their way to becoming centurions, yet they were not senile, enough not to not recognize their son. The mother was rather remiss at him for not having grandchildren or being married like his brother and sister, but he brought so much soothing music to the ears of the pony of the people that it mattered little. He already had a legacy made, and he wouldn't be forgotten, nor would his family. A mere week had arrived. The old harpsichord was taken from Flavio's old home, placed in the f same large theater as f his first performance, much like the city it hadn't changed much. Curtains of red velvet draped around rows and rows and rows of old seats, and over those even more seats, several hundred ponies came from the for the performance, 
and he was happy. So he started the music at due time, yet the four seats reserved for his family remained empty. It was okay though, as his performance lasted several hours. So he played on, entertaining the masses. But whoa, the family did not arrive after three hours. Something was wrong. He fought, but he carried on. Hours became minutes, which themselves became seconds and no sign. Looking up from the, his instrument, Flavio realized something. Blue specters were sitting upon the empty seats above the personal studios. Around. What did this mean? The, one, the only seats that remained empty were the four remaining at the front, yet still empty. The stallion had a better look and realized something dreadful. Even though the years had passed, some of these reverends were old nobles from those times before, when he was still young. He couldn't understand. Then it hit him. His talent was not a boon. It was not even a blessing. It was a curse. Not to him, but to his listeners. Forever damned to listen to his concerts until he died, but soon they would be freed. For he had not long to live. He certainly. He was certain of this. Ponies turned disheveled and decrepit, then collapsed, yet their spirits remained unaware of the time passing. The only one not going through this torture was the musician himself, and he was more than aware of the passage of time. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. The curse, perhaps? It was dreadful. It was a dreadful realization to make especially when you thought you were doing good. The audience was stuck until he finished, but he could not finish until his audience became complete. A music of circles. It is at this moment, at this only moment that Flavio did something he despised more than anything in the world. He emulated rain. Nary, a few tears leaked from his eyes, but they were throwbacks to the start of his talents. And their fall reminded him of the first tune he ever heard, a very, very sour, sour note to leave on, one would think. It's unknown why his parents never arrived nor if his cutie mark was truly cursed, but Flavio plays, awaiting his family's arrival and his audience unaware of the passage of time, still listening to him as intently as they did during their fresh arrival, forever trapped in a music of endless circles and an audience and performer undying.